It's quite easy to imagine what life was like in a castle in the time of knights and princesses, but it sure isn't the same anymore today. So what does it mean to live in a castle in the 21st century, and how are we able to do so? The easiest way to answer that question is to simply show you. Mornings here usually start off in the same manner. My alarm is set for seven, and I typically make a coffee for Anne-Marie and myself. I always like to take a few moments to read before I start my day, and having this routine prevents me from laying in bed and scrolling through Instagram or whatever. The place we're staying at is called Chateau Barrère. We found it through Workaway, more on that in a moment, but what it means for us is that we can spend the morning working on our own businesses and help out with castle stuff in the rest of the day. For today, we swapped things around a little bit. The castle's pretty old and has only recently been hosting weddings, so there's still lots of renovations to do. Today's project was building tables for an upcoming wedding, and since we'd made them before, it was quite easy. Last week's project was sanding and oiling floors, but there's many other things that need to be done. Brief little history about the castle. It's called Chateau Barrère. Technically, it's not a chateau, it's a manoir. It has to do with the height of that particular tower there. In the 60s they did a lot of renovation and they had to lower it for whatever reason, I don't know. It doesn't meet the requirements of a chateau, hence a manoir, which is where the word manor comes from. It was built in the 13th century and we know this because of records that talk about the Pope of that time visiting and they talk about how he stayed there for a few days at the castle and that's pretty much all we know from all the way back then. So there's an old French lady that lives not too far from here, she's almost 100 years old, but she grew up here and when she was around 18, 19, 20, she lived in the castle and she pointed out a few areas to the owner, Yap, where there is now a wall but there is an entrance to an underground tunnel. We walked around in the area a little bit. If you walk about 10 minutes from here, there's a big foresty overgrown hill and we actually found the entrance to one of them. It was filled up with sand and, and dirt so we couldn't really enter it but it's quite interesting to know that all these castles in the area are connected by tunnels. They're said to be big enough for a horse and a carriage to go through in case of war. So the castle is right over there behind the tree and just a few, you know, 100 meters walk is a cemetery which is still being used today and according to the ancient records there is meant to be a monastery pretty much here. I mean we don't know what happened to it. You can find some foundational stones if you were to dig around. So this used to be an old Roman road about that deep underneath this whole area and there should be a road leading all the way up through there from you know back in back in time so if you've never heard of workaway.com uh, or .org I don't know, quite sure. I'll leave a link down below. You should check them out. If you want to travel around and see these amazing locations that are not necessarily touristy, but very local. You get to meet local people. This particular family was Dutch, but there's plenty of French families. So if you want to improve your French or, well, wherever you are. If you're in Spain, you can do Spanish things. If you're in Italy, you can do Italian things. They're scattered across the globe with amazing opportunities. Definitely check it out. We typically have lunch together with our host family. Just like a few hundred years ago, castle life is still very much community oriented. <laughs> but since they were gone today, we just had a snack and pretty much worked behind our computers until dinner. It's usually another shared meal with our host family and by the time we get back to our room, it's almost eight o'clock. So a lot of times at the end of the day, I just like to sit around, maybe read a book. Um, it's really nice and calm and quiet in the evenings. I mean, I don't know if you can hear it. Tonight is a bit loud. There's a bunch of sheep out there on the field just making sheep noises. But other than that, it's very quiet. There's some birds chirping, the sunset is nice, soft, beautiful and long. You can just relax and unwind whilst you're staying here. With fulfilling days like this, there's nothing better than to settle in with a good book or a movie. 
And if you're lucky, you might get a thunderstorm or two. They're very comforting when you're surrounded by stone walls and you hear the rumbling thunder in the distance. It's been a few days now since I recorded most of that footage and I just wanted to give my honest opinion when it comes to using Workaway as a digital nomad. I think it's definitely a great way to connect more with the local people, with the culture, wherever you're traveling, but I don't think it is long-term sustainable. The last three weeks that we've stayed here, I noticed that I slowly started to fall behind on work little by little, and I'll definitely need a few days to catch up on work. So whilst this was a great experience to connect with the people here and to experience a different way of life, I think if you're working a full-time job, this may not be the best option for you. If you're working part-time or you're a freelancer or whatever, definitely go check it out. If you only need a few hours a day to work, then this can definitely be an amazing opportunity for you. Anyway, that's me for now. We're heading down to Barcelona after this. Um, not sure what's gonna happen after that. That's both a bit stressful and, you know, exciting. But we'll see. I'm sure it'll be good. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.